Qin Saimda, and her document was five daughters, no sons. This is Mark Peterson with the frog outside the well, and thanks to Sun Yang and Yu Chan uh, for coming in and helping us today. Okay, so today we're going to talk some more about uh, inheritance for sons and daughters, and we're going to look at the case not only equal between sons and daughters, but what happens when uh, there's no son in the family, when it's only daughters. So what happens though is that the inheritance system starts to change in the start of the 1700s. And here is a chart. This shows the disinheritance of daughters. And here at the beginning, this peck, 100, means the daughter got peck pro, exactly the same amount as the sons. But here we see it starts to drop off. And they use different excuses. They would say uh, in the Yeji and the Jude, you know, the ritual books, mm -hmm. it says Sangbok, you know, the ritual oh, yeah. costume. Yeah. It says, Namja wears songbook for three years, mm -hmm. Dad wears songbook for one year. Mm -hmm. So they said, Dad gets only Sambunji il. Oh. And then uh, they start gradually to cut off the daughter's inheritance. So finally, by the 1720s, 1730s, daughters have no inheritance. And this is the beginning of the true Puge Sahwe. In English, it's an odd word, the uh, patrilineal society. It's an odd word in English, but everyone in Korea knows Puge Sahwe, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you think of as traditional society. Is Puge Sahwe means na uh, Namja, the male dominated society. So uh, here it drops down to zero. And in this early period, you can find documents like the one I just showed you, 1632, uh, 1662. In that early period, there are lots of documents like this. Uh, I can show you a couple more really quickly. Yolgok Sansei, mm -hmm. his uh, Sangso Munso mm. is here, and he is number three, this man here. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. Seven children. Uh, his mother was Shin Saimdang, right? Yeah. And she's known as this wonderful Oman. woman, uh, best example, yeah. best oh, mother. She had seven children, and Yolgok was number three. He's this man right here. But you see, each one of these, this is son, daughter, son, daughter, son, daughter, son. She's just perfect. Son, daughter, son, daughter, son, daughter, son. Oh. <laughs> More sons than daughters. Each, every other one was a son or a daughter. But you see, each one is the same size. And if you count them up, I think in this case, each one has 13 slaves and then so much land. So here you see it's exactly equal. One really interesting case, sort of Tutpake, is Shin Saimda. And her document was five daughters, no sons. And yet they divided the property equally between the five daughters. So very clearly, in the early Chosun period, women had economic rights. They had economic power. If they have inheritance, they can also buy and sell things. I've got documents of women buying and selling property or slaves or something. Oh. So they had some independence in uh, the economic world. Of course, women never passed exams. And it was still, you know, a difference between men and women. But women would inherit property. And they did chesa, the ceremonies, on rotation. Because sons and daughters were equal. They all had equal amount of property. So that's what I've been studying. And I've been trying to show to Korea that before the 18th century, early 17th century, late 17th century back, was a more open kind of society. Mm -hmm. It was Confucian, it was dominated by Confucianism, but it wasn't this strong, complete domination of the Puge Sahwe that we have in the late Chosun period. What makes this situation? Well, I think there are several things. I think Korea had been studying Confucianism, and Confucianism is based on Puge Sahwe. And they thought eventually they had to do it the, the right way. Mm -hmm. And I think population pressure changed. Mm -hmm. Around this time, Korea starts to run out of frontiers, they run out of extra land. Mm -hmm. 
No more so. No grave jobs. No grave jobs so. No one starved to death in the early Chosen period. Mm -hmm. There was plenty of land and plenty of food, but it starts to get tight. And I think also the third thing was the fall of the Ming Dynasty. Uh -huh. That that had big impact on Korea. That now older brother has died. We Koreans, younger brother, have to do the Confucianism correctly, as the books say. And so they started to, and the books say eldest son, eldest son, eldest son. Always oh, eldest. So in, in this uh, chart where the daughters uh, lose all their property inheritances here, you can't even find these kind of documents anymore because everything goes to the eldest son. Mm -hmm. So that's my story in the, in the book that I've written. And I'm frankly, dop dop here because this should be in the textbooks in Korea. But I teach this like it's some kind of secret. And it's not a secret. Everybody should know this. And then if you know that the Fuge Saiwe doesn't have really deep roots, it makes it easier to adjust to modern society without Fuge Saiwe. And we can still have Confucianism, but we can have Confucianism like the old Confucianism. In the old days, it was more free and open. That's the way I look at it. You tell me what do you think? Well, in Korean textbooks, they say that in the Fuge Sawe started from early Chosun. So I was actually first shocked when I heard that until like 1700s that women had the same economical rights as men. As men, yeah. Yeah, but we, ne we never see that and we never knew that in here that in Gyeongguk Dejan it says that mm -hmm. women should have the same rights and same properties as men. So the, the books I've seen, don't, they don't talk about the uh, Confucianization in the late 17th century that I've been writing about. Mm -hmm. But I think that's when it happened. And I think the importance is that Confucian roots are really shallow in Korea. Mm -hmm. So as Korea moves forward to a new society in a new modern age, they can still keep liberal Confucianism. They just have to get rid of the orthodox and strict Confucianism. That, that's my point of view. So that's our presentation for today. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. Bye. Subscribe down here.